Oh, hi there. I'm Manuel Gacebondo, a Colombian plant breeder and PhD candidate from the University of Florida. I'm part of the Plant Breeding Graduate Program and I'm currently based in the Tropical Research and Education Center in Homestead, near Miami, where I'm an integral part of the Wool Lab. My mission here at the Wool Lab is to harness molecular tools to help enhance and make more efficient the plant breeding program in vanilla orchids. Vanilla is very important economically worldwide and the United States is the biggest importer of natural vanilla but local production of vanilla is limited due to high labor costs. Vanilla orchids can be grown in tropical areas such as South Florida, Puerto Rico and Hawaii but as I mentioned labor costs in the United States are higher than in other countries that also produce vanilla like Madagascar, China, Indonesia and Mexico. Our plan is to enhance vanilla genetically and make it more competitive, leveling the playing field for local production of vanilla. Today I want to take you uh, through the vanilla pollination here at the University of Florida at the Tropical Research and Educational Center. This first succession that we're going to pollinate here is a vanilla pompona. It's one of the aromatic species contained in the vaniloid soup family. This vanilla accession comes from the USDA. It has bigger flowers than its sister species, vanilla planifolia, and its flower is yellow. We are doing a pollination of each one of the flowers to record productivity, and we're also using them to evaluate vanillin content. So. Come closer and I'll show you guys how to pollinate vanillas. So the first thing I do is I rip out this uh, petal. This is a way of showing that this flower was already visited by me so I don't have mistakes. Then I do an incision in the labellum, which is the central petal that allows me to see the reproductive organs of the plant. This is the columna. The column of the plant is a fusion of the female part and the masculine part and it's separated by the rostellum. So what I need to do is move the rostellum out of the way and make the pollen contact the stigma. At this point the stigma is receptive so it's sticky so the pollen's stuck there. And I put the rostellum back and this flower has been successfully pollinated. Now I need to record the date, which cross it is, so that we know when to harvest it. We can do the respective um, analysis for the research we're coming up. We don't mix pollination sticks, otherwise we could be spreading disease. And now we're gonna do a vanilla planifolia. This vanilla planifolia, it's a commercial uh, variety that we are evaluating and using as benchmark for our new uh, discoveries. Here we can see its flower. Its flower is uh, perfectly open, so it's ready to be pollinated. So I do the same here, I rip out one of the petals so I know that I already visited this flower. We do the incision. This flower is a bit smaller so it's a bit more challenging than the Pompona one. Now we're gonna do the same in this plant with a very special pollen that I have here that we have been storing for two years in the minus 80 freezer. Here we will evaluate if the pollen can withstand being stored for two years. If the pollen is viable, we'll get a viable seed in the capsule. If it's not, it might induce a haploid individuals that we will use for the breeding program. 
pedal. Make the incision. Special marking allow me to recognize when we harvest that it was not a self pollination. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me through my email or LinkedIn. Thank you.